oh, we're just having a good time mm -hmm. here. And, you know, you really could join us on this couch. There's plenty of room. Karen, it's so good to have you back. I was just trying to... When were you here last? 2009. It was actually the uh, October 2009. Let's make it official. Karen Burkhart. <laughs> uh, beautiful voice, beautiful heart, great story. So many tentacles of interest. Now, you've come to us from your home now, Columbus, Ohio. Right. But tell us where you were born. Well, I was born in Georgetown, Ontario, and I spent uh, some time in Brampton and right here in Burlington. Um, in fact, I used to play in the in the orchard that used to be here on this property. Right here. The, right here. And wasn't that owned by the Smiths? Um, I want to say it was Waldale. Don. Waldale. That was the name I remember about the the orchard. Oh, there's so much history here. You. Um, met your husband. Well, let's just not jump too far ahead because you did time at Circle Square Ranch. That's right. And that was life-changing. Absolutely. That was uh, the summer of 1979, just a couple of years after the, my parents actually came to Christ um, and they were familiar with the ministry of 100 Huntley Street and, and they decided to send both my sister and I to Circle Square Ranch at Severn Bridge that summer. So that was a long time ago and definitely it was a life-changing experience for me. And of note, your parents came to Christ. Tell us how. They came to Christ through um, the I Found It campaign in 1977, Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now called Power to Change. Mm -hmm. um, but they launched a media campaign through the Toronto area and with billboards and bumper stickers and it all I remember it well. Yeah, and it all culminated in a uh, television program where Chuck Colson, founder of Prison Fellowship Ministries, um, gave the invitation to receive Christ and both my parents on the same night gave their lives to Christ and that was a turning point in our whole family. Wonderful, wonderful. You met your husband in Vancouver. We That's just have to cover everything here. <laughs> Uh, what were you doing out there? Well, I was working for Campus Crusade for Christ. Oh. Uh, God just brought me full circle. You know, that was the ministry that that initially led our family to the Lord. And then years later, I ended up working for Campus Crusade. Um, so so I was a single woman living out there. And one lonely Friday night, yeah. <laughs> I got logged on to the Internet to a Christian matchmaking site and uh, met my husband. Didn't know he was going to be my husband at the time, but um, we met and married in eight months. Wow. So. <laughs> Fantastic. We, we may see the fruit of that marriage before yes. <laughs> this few minutes is over. You have a heart for people in prison. You, Absolutely. Your music makes it into prisons. Um, but you also have a heart for, in one case at least, the homeless, those who are homeless. Can you tell us in a capsule the very unusual thing that impacted your family in 2011? Yeah, it was a year ago um, during the 4th of July parade, our annual tradition. Um, during the parade, my son said that he needed to use the restroom. Well, that's a bit of a challenge when you're locked into this parade, but we hiked over to the local Wendy's and stood in line. And while I was standing in line, I heard a voice that I recognized and I looked up and she looked at me and I realized that this was a woman that we had met years before, a young woman. Um, I had actually been involved with her through the Alpha ministry at my church and discipling her and uh, leading her to Christ. And then we didn't see her for many, many years. And I stumbled onto her that day and uh, exchanged email addresses. And I knew that she was in a tough position at that time. She told me she was living on the couch of friend's house. Um, and so I, I walked away from that meeting thinking, okay, Lord, I know you're up to something. Um, I'm not sure how you're gonna use us and how we're supposed to impact this woman's life, but I'll just wait and find out. And about a month later, we got an email from her saying that she had nowhere to go, uh, two, two children. And uh, I said, let me talk to my husband, but why don't you just come and spend some time with us? And she was with us for almost three months. And I understand she arrived with not just two children, <laughs> but a German Shepherd and two cats. <laughs> That's right. She came with a, a dog and two cats, and Whoa. we hadn't planned on that. Do you have pets? We do not have pets for a very good reason. <laughs> so um, that was definitely you know, beyond what we had expected. Um, and she stayed much longer. The, the, um, my sister-in-law was gracious enough to three take months, the dog into over her house. Months. It was over three months. It was about three months that, that she and the children were with us, but the animals uh, moved on a little sooner than that. <laughs> <laughs> what so. did this mean for you, for your whole family, this 
experience I'm doing, I'm sure, what Jesus would do. Well, you know, it was just faith in action. Um, you know, we talk about it, we teach our children all about loving people and about God's gift of grace in our lives. And here was this opportunity where we had this woman in need and we knew that God's heart was for orphans and widows and people in need. And so we just thought, how could we not? It really was not even a decision. We didn't have to go and pray about it and wonder what the Lord wanted from us. We knew that he was calling us to open up our home to this woman. And uh, it was a challenge because, you know, we like our things a certain way. Um, you know, my husband and I, we like our ho home to be neat and orderly. And um, this really threw everything upside down. <laughs> I don't want to push you where you don't want to go, but I know perhaps in a moment of being on the edge in this experience, you felt that your cry to the Lord was answered. What did he say to you? Well, when, um, you know, one of the things with the animals in the house initially, I, you know, I was overwhelmed by the smell of animals. You know, it was hot, it was summertime, and I was just not used to that. And I just thought, oh my goodness, my home is never going to return to normal. I'm never going to, you know, be able to go back to normal living. And one day, right in kind of the middle of that, I had a knock on the door and it was from a neighbor, a new neighbor, and she'd never been in my home before. And she knocked on my door and she walked in. And the first thing she said, she said, what is that beautiful smell? She said, how do you make your home smell so beautiful? And I just about fell over because that was the last thing I was expecting her to say. And the one thought that immediately came to my mind is it's the fragrance of Jesus. Mm. And I thought, you know, he us spreads everywhere, the fragrance of the knowledge of him. Absolutely. He was yeah. with us and giving us strength uh, to go through that time. And, uh, you know, and I just got to believe that that's going to make a lasting impact, not only in her life, but in the lives of her children and my children. Well, you've challenged us all. And you are going to have a new CD coming out is it? within the, hopefully a month or so, oh. the new CD. Uh, we're, we're getting close to finishing on that. It's called Consider the Source, and uh, I'm really excited about it. Tell us about the song you're going to sing now with your boyhood friend, childhood friend, yes. boyfriend. Friend. <laughs> yes, um, the song is called Never Mistake, and I heard a one, one line in college many years ago. It said, never mistake the silence of God for the absence of God. Mm -hmm. And I really needed to know that many years ago, uh, particularly in my quest to find a mate, and, and it, God seemed silent for a lot of years, and I wrote that phrase down in my Bible, and it eventually became a song. Um, and Kevin Pauls was gracious enough to record the, su the song as a, du as a duet with me. Um, and but this so is the first time you've done it live. This is the first you've time we've sung together ever. Apart. That's right. Uh, modern technology allowed us to, uh, to record the song in separate cities. Fantastic. Karen Burkhardt, I'm going to send you off. And because I don't want to sit here alone and listen, I've asked your boys to come and keep me company. Okay. So off you go. I'm looking forward to this. And I'm going to welcome Tyler, who's nine, on July 11th. And um, Colson, named after Chuck Colson. Well, Colson may be watching from over there. Um, he turned six, didn't he, on June 27th. So now here we go with Mum and uh, Kevin Pauls, her friend from childhood, and Roy Uman, who's just a blessing every time he comes here too. Never mistake. Living 
Living in the land of consequences Weeping over sin that led you here Your voice is weak from telling him you saw me Still it feels like he's turning a deaf fear And you wonder if he cares even wonder if he's there Never mistake the silence of God for absence Never mistake his discipline for wrath Never mistake a no for I don't love you Never mistake the Father heart of God Even wonder if he's there Never mistake the silence of God for absence Never mistake his discipline for wrath Never mistake a no for I don't love you Never mistake the Father Never mistake the goodness of